Hello. Welcome to my dream come true. <laughs> I'd like to thank Abraham for the best shower I've ever had in my life. If you're staying here at the Marriott, it has like a waterfall <laughs> falling down, which is one of the conditions I've become addicted to with my well-being. And I'm, I'm really here to take my practice one step further. Uh, it was probably six months ago that I had acknowledged Esther as one of those people on the earth that is showing me a way of doing things that actually looks good to me, where no one else is. And, and I said, I'll do it. I'm ready. I've been trying for years, haphazardly. So I connected to everyone in this room, and I thank you for being my Abraham family. I know that we're drawn here together. And I've been waiting for this moment. I've been visualizing this moment. And I've been waiting to just come and thank all of you and tell you how beautiful my life has been since I've been looking for beauty every moment. When I wake up and I decide, oh, wait a second. This doesn't feel that great. What feels good? Oh, hold on a second. Wait a second. Let's, let's turn on Abraham. If I'm determined by who I spend the most time with, I'm going to spend the most time with Abraham. <laughs> I'm going to start spending time with you. And one easy, satisfying step at a time, find my way to who I am in this beautiful life. And in this last six months, especially this last six weeks, especially this last six days, this last six minutes, Everything has been going better and just blowing my mind the things that come together. I can't coordinate when she says, when they say 2,000 action hours in 30, 30, what is it, two seconds of thought? Thank you. It's a lot of leverage and alignment. I now meditate before my meetings and I get a rampage going of the beauty I'm, I'm about to work with with the friends I'm about to engage with that I get to work with. The nice thing is because you've already been doing that, it's already there. In other words, you don't even have to set forth the intention that it's what's going to happen because it's what's already happening and anything else is illogical, isn't it? Yeah. Momentum is a lovely thing. Momentum is a lovely thing. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever been introduced to. I can't say thank you enough. Can you acknowledge the worthiness you feel because of how you figured out how to allow this connection that has always been there for you, but now you've tapped into it in a way that is causing you to just expect the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, the next thing to go well for you. And so it does. Yes. The, my problem before was ego and the self love, the difference between doing something to to do it, be, to satisfy myself, and then to be satisfied and love myself and go do something is the gift of life that you well, help share with clarify me. Clarify that for us a little further. I am a musician. I am a lyricist. I am an artist. I am everything you've been speaking to this morning. And I now look for the life I want to create in the song I go to make. Where before I went to blow up the room and, and I still do. <laughs> but what we wanted to hear is your distinction relative to the ego, the selfish point of view. We just want to fine tune that with you just a little bit. The driving factor is when I notice the driving factor, I question it. Well, so let's just start by saying the driving factor is often what I'm trying to accomplish here in terms of my action, but rather than calling it a driving factor, let's call it the calling factor or the flow factor, or what's already in motion factor or the pre flowed energy factor or the getting ready to be ready to be ready to be ready to be ready factor. And so what you've discovered, because you must be egotistical in that you must focus and you must focus about self. That's what the selfish factor is about. That's what the satisfaction is about because you can only perceive through the eyes of self. But the determination that you're making, the distinction that you're making is not ego or no ego or selfish or no selfish because in the satisfaction, there has to be a selfish interest all the way along the way. The factor that you're discovering here is 
to be satisfied even though it hasn't manifested all the way out here. It's being so egotistical and so selfish that I'm determined to find something to feel good about even though others in the room may not be able to see it yet. I'm not going to be confused about what path I'm on because I've got a bead on what it feels like to be on the path of most allowance, which is the same as the path of least resistance. Yes? Yes. I love myself now. I love myself. And now what do I want to go do? Instead of before I did this and I love myself and I did this I and I love myself and I love this airplane ramp. And I love this seat and I love this empty seat next to me. There is so much to appreciate as you're moving through the day that when you tune yourself, when you finally tune yourself, then you're able to find the subtle beauty. Esther remembers moving to the desert after having lived in California. And in the desert, there was a lot of sand. And there were a lot of rocks and there was a lot of space between anything that was green. But there was a subtle beauty in the desert that she came to appreciate. But at first she had to look really hard to find it because it didn't just bowl her over. She had to reach for it. The desert was hot and San Diego had been cool and San Diego was green and the desert was brown. But because she wanted to find satisfaction, she had to tune herself differently. And then she discovered beauty in the desert that felt more satisfying to her than the beauty that she was finding in other places that had much more water and much more green and much lower temperatures. Beauty is in the eye of the perceiver, in the eye of the beholder, in the eye of the aligned, you see. And that's how you get unconditional. So then you say, oh, 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 Abraham, we're on to you. You want us to get unconditional so that we can live in deserts <laughs> instead of oases. So we can live and then we can just learn to look really hard for things that are pleasant and then we're just going to make ourselves satisfied without the beautiful things and we say if it sounded to you like that's what we said it isn't what we said what we said is find something to appreciate and tune yourself to that and in that satisfaction there will be more and more and more because through life you've told your vortex exactly how you want to live and how you want to feel and your inner being knows exactly where all of that is in relationship to where you are. And the more satisfied you are in your deserts, then the more oasis you will be guided to. The more dissatisfied you are in your desert, the harder it will be for you to find water or anything to appreciate anywhere. Yeah. Really good. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Really good. Really good. Yeah.